Here we are 27 years later, and we still don't know who she is. She's known as the Atwood Girl. She was in a shallow grave, and it was off of Atwood Street. Her real name and everything else about her remain a mystery. There's so few answers, so many questions about what happened to this girl, who she is, how she died. In 1995, Dr. Carol Terry worked for Fulton County. This case is personal to me because I did her exam. She was sure the answers to her questions would come. The girl was young, in her early to mid-teens. Someone somewhere must be missing her. Her body was badly decomposed. Technology told investigators what she potentially looked like, but it wasn't able to tell much else. There was nothing in the toxicology. There was no obvious trauma. And what was it about this case that really has stuck with you for these 27 years? It was one I, I thought should be resolved and could be resolved. Today, she has renewed hope thanks to forensic genetic genealogy. It's what helped identify Marlene Stanrich. An individual had found the remains in the woods over in Stone Mountain, Georgia. It took Gwinnett County PD 40 years to identify her, a wife and mother who disappeared in 1973. Would Marlene Stanrich still be an unidentified woman had there not been this technology with genetic genealogy? Yes. The same is true for Gordon Rexroad in Gwinnett County, Stacy Lynn Chahorsky in Dade County, and dozens of others across the country who, after decades, now have names again. Traditional DNA testing could not help crack these cases because there was no DNA investigators could access to compare it to. Millions of people have willingly uploaded their DNA to sites like 23andMe or Ancestry.com, but police can't use them to solve crimes or find missing people. So companies developed their own sites like GEDmatch and Family Tree DNA. People upload their DNA to these sites so it can be shared to find matches. Our technology looks at tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of markers. That's Kristen Middleman the chief business development officer at Othram Labs in Texas. It created the site DNA Solves. And so we're able to identify someone from longer range relationships. DNA Solves helps Othram build a family tree of likely relatives to the person being tested. The potential relatives are contacted and their DNA can be compared to the original sample to determine a match. Middleman says their success rate is nearly 100%. Almost all of our cases are cases that have failed elsewhere or became a DNA dead end. Othram says it's working on hundreds of cases now, and not just to identify remains. We would be able to identify a perpetrator the first time they committed a crime, and not the second, third, and fourth. Investigators credit forensic genealogy with catching the Golden State Killer, who murdered 13 people and raped nearly 50 more in the 70s and 80s. But while departments like Gwinnett embrace the help, the technology isn't widely used. Why is it that you're the last resort and not the first resort if things are so successful? Our technology is fairly new and people don't know about it yet. I think the more and more people hear about what we do and see the difference, I think that this will become the standard. And that brings us back to the Atwood girl. The technology could do more than just tell investigators who she is. Is it possible that she was murdered? Yes, oh yes. Do you think by identifying her, that could also lead to more answers about how she died and maybe if somebody killed her? Yes, absolutely. That's gonna open up a whole lot of doors about what she was last known to be doing and who she might've been with. And, and then that might generate more leads in terms of, well, when did you last know her to be alive? What was going on? Those doors remain closed for now, but Dr. Terry hopes Fulton County takes that next step. I would like to have this answer before I go to my grave. And this is one of the ones that has always bothered me.